Hello friends, this video on electric charges and fields part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 7 before going ahead with part 8. The, the like charges will repel and the unlike charges will attract the a positively charged body will attract a negatively charged body. So whenever we talk about attraction or repulsion, that means there is a force which is attracting an object or there is a force which is, which is repelling an object, right? So now we will talk about that force. So that force is nothing but the electric force which arises due to the electric charges. So now first, the first in the first step, we covered studying about electric charge. Now we will study about electric force. So to talk about electric force, the first thing that we will talk about is the Coulomb's law. It is a law which tells us how the electric force would be between two point charges. So this law was named after the scientist who discovered it, that is Coulomb. So this law states that force between two point charges, what are point charges? Point charges are the charges whose dimensions are very small. Charges with dimensions very small. So dimensions are very small compared to the distance between them. Right. So Coulomb's law states that force between two point charges inversely varies inversely as the square of the distance between the charges. That means let us suppose if I have two charges let us say I have two charges, two point charges, which are separated by a distance r. So according to Coulomb's law, the force between these two charges is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. That means as the distance increases, the force between them decreases. As the distance decreases, the force between them increases. It also says that it varies directly as the product of the magnitude of the two charges. Let us suppose that these two charges have magnitudes Q1 and Q2. So this force is directly proportional to the product of Q1 and Q2. So remember here it talks about only the magnitude. It doesn't matter whether the charges are of uh, positive nature or negative nature. And it says that it acts along the line joining the two charges. That means the force will act along this line. Right? Because this is the line joining the two charges. So Coulomb's law basically defined the force which will act between two point charges. So according to this, we can say that let us suppose these are two charges, point charges Q1 and Q2. If distance between Q1 and Q2 increases, then the force between them decreases, right? Because right now the force of attraction is less. And this is very obvious also, right? If, if two persons are very far away from each other, then the force of attraction or the interaction between them is less. Similarly, if the two persons are very close to each other, if the two persons come closer to each other, in that case, their interaction increases or the force increases, right? So let us suppose if we have two objects Q1 and Q2, then according to Coulomb's law, the force or the electric force between them is directly proportional to Q1, Q2 divided by R square. Or this we can write it as this is equal to some constant k q1 q2 divided by r square. So right now I am talking only about magnitude. Now when I talk about direction it acts along the line joining the two charges. So in that case I can denote the direction with the unit vector which acts along the line joining the two charges. So we can say that unit vector as r cap. Right. So the, what was this constant k? This constant k was some arbitrary value at that time when this Coulomb's law was discovered. This k was some arbitrary value, some arbitrary constant. Right. So we will talk about k in the next slide. So for now you understood that what is, how do we define the force between two point charges which are separated by some distance r? It is given by Coulomb's law. 
Now, if suppose if the two charges, now let us talk about the nature of charges. What happens if both the charges are of opposite nature? Let us suppose if this is positive and this is negative. What will happen in that case? The charges will attract. So that means they will come closer to each other if the charges are of opposite nature. Similarly, if the charges are of similar nature, let us suppose if both are negative or if both are positive, in that case what will happen? They will go away from each other. They will move away from each other. So what do we see? We see that if one is positive and the other is negative, then the force of interaction will act towards that particular charge. For example, if I say that one is positive and the other one is negative, then that object then, then the force on that particular charge due to the opposite charge will always be towards that charge because since it is opposite so it will try to come near but if it is the same kind of charge then they will try to repel they will try to go away from each other right you will understand this positive negative thing or the direction of force you will come to know as we as we <coughs> solve numericals as we go ahead now let us talk about the constant k which I defined in the last slide. What was that k? Just now I told you that this force is equal to some constant k product of the two charges inversely proportional to the distance between them. So what was this k? When this force was defined at that time this k was some arbitrary value. But later on this value of k was calculated as 9 into 10 to the power 9 Newton meter square per coulomb square. So you must be surprised that out of the blues from where did they get this value of 9 into 10 to the power 9. This k was later experimentally found and defined as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. This value was later discovered that k is nothing but it is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Where what is epsilon? It is nothing but permittivity of free space. Now you must be curious to know what is permittivity now? From where did this new term come? I will discuss about permittivity but not in this lesson. I just told you because we will be using k hereafter in almost all the slides. So you should know what is k. When it comes to permittivity I will discuss about it when we discuss the next lesson. Right? So k was defined as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and this permittivity in free space that is epsilon naught has a constant value of 8.85 .8 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb square newton inverse meter inverse. So using this value, the value of k was calculated and it was found to be 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton meter square coulomb square. So from where did we get the unit for k? From this equation itself, if you see what is k? k is nothing but force into r square divided by q1, q2. So what is the unit of force? It is newton. What is the unit of r? That is the distance between the two charges. It is meters, meter square. And what is the unit for charge? It is coulomb. So this is newton meter square per coulomb square. So that is how we got the unit for k. So this was all about k. I just told you because we will be using this value of k 9 into 10 to the power 9 everywhere as we go ahead. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.